everyone, welcome back to the tower. If you are a Disney fan and you are active on social media, you have probably seen a slew of pictures and Snapchats and all kinds of postings regarding pass holder and cast member previews for Pandora. And after about two weeks of watching countless friends, coworkers, and other people I know go to Pandora for the first time, I was finally able to go for myself on Friday, May 19th and I am bursting with excitement about it, so I decided I needed to make a video and tell you guys all about it. I wanna preface this review by saying I know basically nothing about the movie Avatar. I know that there are blue people in it. I know that people often compare the storyline to Pocahontas, and I know that Zoe Saldana is in it, and that's pretty much all I know. Um, I never cared to watch the movie, I thought about watching the movie before going to my preview, but dude, it's so long and I don't care. Like, I'm not even gonna lie about it. Even after going to Pandora and seeing it and loving it, I still do not care to watch the movie. But I wanna make sure that that is out in the open before I review it, because I think that that's an important thing to know, is that you can still really love and appreciate Pandora as a land without having seen the movie or knowing anything about the movie. I have never in my life been so blown away by something Disney has done. It was a wild experience. I had no idea that I was going to feel this strongly about this land. I really did not think I was going to care. I am in love with Pandora. Both attractions are incredible, especially Flight of Passage, which I will get into in a moment, but both attractions are really great. The mountains are huge. Like standing next to those mountains, you feel like an ant. It's crazy. I was there at sunset and it was absolutely beautiful to watch the sunset over the floating mountains. I did not get to see the bioluminescent part because my preview ended at eight o'clock. So it was not dark enough for that to be happening yet. And I actually don't think that they have turned it on for guests yet at all because um, I haven't seen anyone say anything about that part yet, so I, I don't think that's something anyone has experienced. But you could definitely tell what things were probably going to be bioluminescent, so that was cool. Without going into too much detail to spoil it, I will say that it was an incredible experience. If you're not excited, you should be. Coming from me who was not excited, like, don't be skeptical about it. It is mind-blowing. It is amazing. This land looks like no expense was spared. I think Joe Rody poured his literal entire being into this land. Like there was not an inch of that land that I was like, they could have done that better. That is what I can say about this land without spoiling anything. For those of you that would like to experience Pandora with absolutely nothing being spoiled for you, I would stop watching the video here because now I'm gonna start talking very specifically about my experience and the details that I really loved, and I'm gonna post pictures in this part as well. But for those of you that would like more detail, uh, stay tuned, because we're gonna dive into that now. So our preview started at 6 p.m. I got really emotional walking into the land, because uh, they scanned our bands to make sure that we were actually supposed to be there, and then we got to walk under this little like archway thing um, that they had put up and into Pandora. Um, and they gave us this little pamphlet with like a map of the land that described everything, and we got to walk in and I got really teary-eyed seeing these mountains, okay? They are huge. I felt so small next to them and I got really emotional because just right off the bat, it was like, wow, like Animal Kingdom did need this. Animal Kingdom has deserved this for so long and so to see something so beautiful just right off the bat, I got teary-eyed like, wow, it's been almost 20 years and this park is finally complete, it feels. Before even riding anything, it was just like, wow, we're, we're done, this park, Though nothing at Disney World will ever be finished, for now this park actually feels complete and like a whole day park and it was great. We took a couple pictures of the floating mountains and then saw that the Nobby River journey only had a 10 minute wait so we immediately got in line for that because that was the first attraction we stumbled on. Nobby River journey is very similar to any other slow moving boat ride in Disney. It's a rather small boat compared to other attractions, like living with the land has such long rows and there's so many rows. Um, the boats are pretty small so it's kind of an intimate experience which is cool. We got to ride by ourselves. They gave us our own boat, which was really nice. It was immediately one of the most visually stunning attractions I've ever been on. Everything was bioluminescent. There was so much to see on this attraction. Every inch of wall space is covered. And there are like these incredible screens that are also covered by like bioluminescent foliage, but you can see like Navi wildlife and stuff like on these screens and it's not like the grand fiesta tour at epcot where it's like hey this is a screen with donald duck on it no like if you didn't know that it had to be a projection you wouldn't know there was a screen there it's a great ride for the whole family it's slow moving 
Um, it's very aesthetically pleasing. The Shaman of Songs animatronic was really impressive and kind of creeped me out a little bit because of how lifelike it looked. I was kind of like inching away from it a little bit. I was like, whoa, this is weird, but very impressive. If you're going to be in Animal Kingdom and you're going to visit Pandora, I would definitely not miss Navi River Journey. It was great. Immediately after Navi River Journey, we saw that the wait for Flight of Passage was 40 minutes. I personally was a little concerned that Flight of Passage would not even be up and running, so I was like, let's just get in line, let's just do it. Like, I wanna do it so bad, because I had heard so many good things. Uh, something really cool that I noticed when we got in line for Flight of Passage is that the touch points for Fast Pass actually are not in the standard shape of Mickey's head. They have the um, ACE logo on them, and it's like a circle, but it has two little circles on the edges, so it makes like a little hidden Mickey. Um, but it's not the standard touch point, which I thought was really interesting. But no one had fast pass during our pass holder preview, we were told. So everyone was in the standby queue. And this is one of the largest queues I have ever seen. It is massive, but there's a lot to look at. I actually really enjoyed being in the queue. Um, we ended up waiting over an hour, but I really didn't feel like it was over an hour because there was so much to look at and I took so many pictures of everything. So the queue is super long. At first you kind of like, start off and you go through um, like these brown walls with like handprints on them and then you kind of go into a more like bioluminescent type room with like plants and stuff and then you go into like a very like science lab looking room again i haven't seen the movie so there may be more correct names for these things but this is what it looks like to me as an outsider of the avatar fandom when you turn into like the science lab room it has like all of these like test tubes and stuff and there's one part that I was super like fangirling over where there's like um an eye washing station like you would see in like a science classroom and right behind it there's a desk and on this desk there are drawings of avatar and different creatures and if you kind of duck down there is a picture of a real dog on this desk and I like lost my mind and I posted it to snapchat because I was like whose dog is this I need to know and then you go into a room that has the avatar body again I haven't seen the movie so I there could be a better word for that but it's just like the blue floating body in the water and a lot of other neat stuff to look at and then you go into another room and I'm pretty sure that that's the last room before you go into the pre-show so this final room that you're in there's like a really big mural of um, the avatar characters on the wall and that's where merge is so that's where they divide you up into different lines once we were at merge i went to the far left queue but there were multiple other lines there as well they held us there for a few minutes and then we turned a corner and went up some stairs and that is where the pre-show room was the pre-show is in two parts the first room you stand on your numbers and there's a huge screen in front of you. One of the most advanced looking screens I've ever seen, by the way, like definitely the most high definition Disney free show I've ever seen. So that was cool. But the free show is very long. So this guy comes on and he explains about Pandora's conservation efforts and about the scientists that came up with connecting humans to avatars so that they can ride on banshees. And then you get linked to an avatar. They scan you and then uh, your number shows up with the avatar that you've been linked to. I ended up as a boy and my boyfriend ended up as a girl, so they are not by any means uh, gender specific. This part there did seem to be a bit of a struggle with because during the pre-show, the guy was talking and then all of a sudden he was like, stand by, and then we waited about 10 minutes before our avatars showed up. I have a feeling it's not supposed to take that long because it was really awkward and it was just silent and we were all standing there like, waiting but eventually we did get our avatar and we were able to go into the next room uh, the next room is the orientation room and that's where they kind of explain more about this will be a thrilling experience and you have to be brave and like pretty much just like patrick warburton spiel and soren except kind of going over that it's going to be more intense and then once that part is done you go into the link chair room and that's where the actual ride happens so in each pre-show there are 16 people and numbers one through eight go on one side of a wall and numbers nine through 16 go on the other side of a wall. I was number nine, so I got to be right on the end. Here's where it gets insane. There is a wall behind you with like little shelves. You're asked to put any personal items onto this shelf. So like purses, bags, everything like that go onto this shelf. And then you have to get into your link chair. Your link chair is similar to like a 
motorcycle you have to straddle it and the seat that you're straddling is actually lighting up the whole time which is super cool and then you have to lean all the way forward there's a pad against your chest your legs are pushed up against something they're not just like out free and then this pad comes up against your back and you're leaning forward and there's like handlebars and you just sit there and then there's also a screen um right between the handlebars and it shows different things but it, one of the cool things it shows is your face transforming into the avatar you were paired with so that's really cool there's also a camera on it and you can like actually see your face moving so that's pretty cool as well but there are no on-ride photos or videos to my knowledge i was not given one so i don't think that's a thing that happens so we sat there for like a long time like we probably sat there for a good five to seven minutes just anxiously sitting there and out of nowhere like with no warning no no like voice came on over the loudspeaker no cast members said anything this ride just starts and it was like what it was such a trip like because you feel yourself going up and now that i've uh, researched it a little more it is very similar to the soren seating arrangement in that it's a tiered theater so just like Soren, you have to go up. Oh, I also forgot to mention, you're wearing like these 3D glasses, but they're much larger than the standard 3D glasses that you wear at like Filler Magic or Star Tours. They kind of take up your whole face. All of a sudden this ride just starts and you just go up and there's like this weird color thing happening on a screen in front of you. The screen is massive. It's not like Soren. like you cannot see, I mean, I didn't try to, but like on Soren, no matter where you're sitting, you can see the top and the bottom of the screen and it's very apparent that it's a screen no like it is like you were there in pandora and immediately after you go up you see like this lush landscape and then you go down and you dive and i immediately screamed i'm not gonna like this because it was the most like shocking thrilling drop like i was like whoa like mind-blowing and it felt so real it felt like i was on a real moving ride not like a simulator type attraction compared to star tours compared to body wars even though that's super old compared to soren compared to any other simulator type ride i've ever been on and even going as far as to say spider-man at universal or um forbidden journey at universal i have never been on anything like this there is absolutely no attraction in either us disney park or universal to my knowledge that rivals this at all it's 4d you, you your seat is definitely moving you are going you are dropping and then you're rising you can feel the banshee breathing between your legs because you are straddling this banshee for your ride vehicle and you like it literally moves and you can feel it breathing uh there's like a big wave that crests over you and you feel a mist and it is the most accurate and controlled mist like it's not just like, oh, here's a spray of water in your face. It just, it's the perfect amount of water to make it feel like that's actually what's happening. Everything about it was just phenomenal. It was absolutely exhilarating. Everyone I know that has ridden it has said that it's the best ride they've ever been on. I have not had one person that I know that has ridden it have negative things to say. I was shaking, visibly shaking for like at least 15 minutes afterwards because I just couldn't get over it. I had no idea that it was going to be that intense or that exhilarating. I was really expecting Soren and it is not Soren. Like Soren, it puts Soren to absolute shame and I love Soren. Every time I think about Pandora, I get a little emotional, um, especially Flight of Passage because for everyone who ever says that Disney is for kids, for anyone who has ever said that Disney makes cookie cutter type rides for anyone who has ever said anything negative about disney or tried to put universal on a pedestal against disney in my opinion once pandora is released to the public once the general public can ride flight of passage it is going to put everything that anyone has ever done to shame in my opinion it is a game-changing attraction i'm just beyond proud of what they did with this attraction i am so so proud and i'm so excited for what's coming now, like Star Wars and Toy Story and anything else that we might be unleashing in the future. If Flight of Passage becomes the standard that Walt Disney World and Disney Parks in general holds themselves to, we are unstoppable. If you have the chance to ride Flight of Passage, do it. If you were skeptical about Pandora, do Flight of Passage anyway. Because of how long our queue took for Flight of Passage, we ended up uh, only having about 20 minutes left after we got off Flight of Passage. So we immediately went to Pongu Pongu, which is their like 
for refreshment stand to get a night blossom because I've wanted it since the first time I saw the picture of it. It looks incredible. So we had to get in line and get it. And it was delicious. It is my favorite drink on property now non-alcoholic anyway. It, it said it was apple, pear, lime, and something else flavored. And then there are boba balls on top and those are passion fruit flavored and they were so good. Um, I could drink those all day. They were amazing. They also have a margarita that also has boba balls on top and is strawberry flavored. And then they have um, some local native ales there as well. And this thing called pineapple lumpia, which was a cream cheese and pineapple spring roll. Um, which Adam got and he said they were super delicious but very very sweet and he had two of them because that's how they come packaged and he was like two was a lot so uh, yeah the offerings at Pongu Pongu were great I can't wait to go and get another night blossom and eventually try that margarita as well we really wanted to go to Satuli Canteen but unfortunately as soon as we got out of Pongu Pongu we ran over to Satuli and they were like we're closed there was still 15 minutes left of our preview, but they were like, no, you're not coming in here. So I did not get to experience that, but I'm very excited to try the food there and to use the new mobile ordering system that they've released. Considering that no other element of Pandora was a disappointment, I'm gonna assume that Satuli Canteen is fantastic also. That was my experience in Pandora. Uh, I'm pretty sure I talked about Flight of Passage for like 20 minutes just now, I'm so sorry. But Pandora is excellent. I had the best time ever there. I cannot wait to go back. If any of you have had the chance to go to Pandora, please tell me what you thought in the comments below. I cannot stop fangirling about it, so I would love to hear your thoughts and fangirl with any of you that loved it as well. And if you haven't had the chance to go to Pandora yet, tell me what you're most excited about, because I just can't stop talking about it, and I would love to hear you guys' thoughts on it. So if you guys enjoyed this video, please hit the thumbs up for me, and as always, for more magical Disney content, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a magical day, and I will see you real soon. Bye!